Hey boys, wanna play some volleyball? Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that regularly puts my likeness into some pretty uncomfortable positions. I mean, seriously, there was that time I was examining the AVGN's overactive bowels, that time I got a butt plug, and that time I was a dinosaur, and now I'm an amply chested female. Welcome to Internet popularity, ladies and gentlemen. But today, it's for good reason, because we're talking about Dead or Alive, the fighting series known for buxom, half-naked women smacking each other around until someone yields or blacks out. When you look at it that way, these games make Fifty Shades of Grey sound like Winnie the Pooh. The females from the series became so popular for their, uh, well-crafted assets, a beach volleyball spin-off series of games starring the girls was released to give them a slightly more believable reason as to why they would be walking around in what equated to shoelaces, and a few well-placed pocket squares. But before you get too excited about Xbox-era ogling, it's worth mentioning that at least one of these girls is underage, which gets complicated when you consider the game is rated M for mature, i.e. it should only be played by those 17 and up. Let me do the math for you. That means you have one year to legally play these games, age 17, before you run the risk of being a creepy cradle robber and breaking some pedophilia laws. So as you can see, the game has some complicated female issues to work out, and back in March, they started to take action. The game's community leaders went all haze code and soft banned some of the more, uh, suggestive female costumes from competitive play at official Dead or Alive 5 last round tournaments, citing a desire to ease up on the franchise's sex factor in the interest of improving the game's overall image. Here's the official statement, quote, This is a movement that was discussed by several members of the community to try and help turn around the image that has plagued the franchise. DOA has always been known for its over-sexualized females, and just that alone has pushed people away from even trying the game. Sex appeal in the DOA franchise will never go away, but we, the community, want people to take it seriously and started the costume ban at offline tournaments to force people to focus more on the gameplay aspect of the game. This is a soft ban, and is at the discretion of the tournament an organizer running the game at the event. However, we highly encourage people to not use the suggested costumes on stream for something like the top eight. So, no more sexy costumes, but have no fear, Kasumi will still be throwing her crotch into your face like three times around. But here's the thing, while I respect them wanting to turn the image of the series around, this decision was wrong. Especially if the goal was to focus more on the gameplay of the series. And no, I'm not just saying that because I'm lacking my daily quota of jiggle physics. No. In Dead or Alive, sexy costumes are a key gameplay and strategic element. Let me explain. Last episode, we proved that games that are supposed to be balanced, like League of Legends, Unreal Tournament, even Team Fortress 2, contained an inherent flaw in the system. An imbalance not due to the game's programming, but due to our brain's programming. That the colors of red and blue, often randomly determined at the start of each match, were sub consciously affecting the player's level of aggression and play strategy, altering their chance at winning before the match even began. Crazy, but true. Well, in the case of Dead or Alive, sexy costumes are doing a similar thing. Multiple scientific studies have shown that sexual arousal slows reaction time, meaning that if I'm getting all hot and bothered by my opponent playing as Mila wearing some overalls DLC, I'm gonna be much more vulnerable on the battlefield, especially in a fighting game where quick reactions are everything. In fact, studies have shown that the typical human reaction speed is between 200 and 300 milliseconds, say 250 for our purposes today. Now, consider that fighting games like Dead or Alive Last Round run at 60 frames per second. Doing some simple math, that means that the player in a regular, non-sexy match has about 15 frames in which to react to their opponent's next move. That is not a lot. But now, consider this. In a 1999 study on male 
sexual arousal and its impact on reaction time, the results showed that horny men were nearly eight times slower to react to stimuli. Eight times! Taking the numbers to the extreme to see the full distraction value, that would be the equivalent of me using Helena's seashell bikini and your reaction time suddenly slowing from 250 milliseconds to two whole seconds as you get distracted by my voluptuous curves. My character's fully exposed fun bags have given me a huge strategic advantage. In short, the formula for winning in DOA, step one, pick Kasumi Angel, step two, arouse opponent, step three, profits. Now, you might counter this argument by saying, but good players are at the top of their game and wouldn't get distracted like that, and you'd be partially right. They're not getting distracted to that extreme, but their reaction times would be slowed by some amount. It's just human nature. And there's more you can do to throw off even the top players from their game. You see, those arousal studies proved that if you continue to show the same sexual stimulus over and over again, the subject's reaction time slowly starts to return to normal levels as they grow accustomed to seeing Tina's, uh, patriotism. This is what's known as habituation. The person has, in essence, become desensitized to the distraction. Translating this to the game, if I'm choosing Mamiji in the red ribbon costume over and over again, the strategic advantage I was getting no longer exists. My opponent starts to get used to seeing my girl in near bondage attire. But the study also shows that if all of a sudden a new sexual stimulus is introduced, the subject's reaction time once again slows considerably, back to the original levels from before. In other words, you would get the biggest advantage by mixing it up every match, getting her out of the ribbons and into the red bunny suit, followed by the naughty nurse, then the red bikini, then man, there really are a lot of extreme outfits in this game, huh? But what this would do is ensure that my opponent is never getting habituated to the visual distraction, and his reaction time is staying slow throughout the various matches. In short, like I said, in Dead or Alive, sexy costumes are just as much a part of the gameplay as Johnny Cage's ball punches to the Mortal Kombat series. The choice of what costume your character is wearing and how long they wear it is just as important a strategic move as whether to block low or go in for a grab. But you could take it another way. It would seem like I've just given more reasons to ban these costumes, right? If sexy outfits truly do slow player reaction time, they're in essence creating an unbalance in the system. And by soft banning them, it would seem like you're putting everyone back onto the same level playing field. You're getting rid of this boob and bondage filled metagame, except that you're not. While yes, large exposed chests have been shown to be a universally arousing feature for heterosexual men, multiple studies have shown that high heels show similar physiological effects, meaning that Marie Rose and Sarah Bryant are out by their default costumes. Other issues like an hourglass figure or even better posture also affect sexual arousal, so good luck banning those things. And that's just on the men's side. What about female DOA players? Wait. Do those exist? What characters, out of curiosity, are they choosing? And more importantly, what costumes? Now that's a study I'd like to see. If you're a female DOA player, leave a comment. I'd be really interested to see your answers. Anyway, if we're on the subject of women, they've been shown to be more sexually attracted to larger chested men, knocking out beefcakes like Rig. And they like smaller butts, so Akira's tight tush is gonna serve him well. But the fundamental problem in creating a non-sexual balanced DOA experience for women is, it's it's impossible. Women are starting off with a disadvantage that designers can't solve for. At the risk of sounding politically incorrect, but ultimately using science as my shield, in almost every age group, males have faster reaction times than females. This trend has held true across decades of study, and literally thousands of test subjects. With a recent exploration into the subject from 2006 using 7,600 participants. But it gets worse, as these same studies have shown that the female disadvantage can't be reduced by practice. Again, this isn't me saying it, it is decades worth of researchers running experiments on the topic. And what does that physical limitation translate to? Well, on average, 20 milliseconds, which translates to one additional frame of action on the screen, which might seem minor to most. But in tournament play, where attacks and counters have to be nearly frame perfect, those extra 
milliseconds do matter. They do make a difference. It's a tragic fact, but unless games take into account the gender of the player, female gamers will always be playing catch-up in these sorts of games. If there's one thing these last two episodes have shown, it's that balance in video games is nearly impossible. Whether it's the subconscious effects of color making us more aggressive in FPSs, or sexy high heels distracting us from oncoming projectiles, the human brain is the one challenge game designers can't really control for. So don't blame me when the next Dead or Alive game features two gender-neutral green avatars duking it out for the sake of balance. Now that would be a creepy one to transition to extreme beach volleyball. But it just goes to show that in the end, a perfectly balanced game might not always translate to the most fun game. There are unwritten strategies at play that go far beyond the code that programmers put into a disc. Rather, these are parts of a biological code put into our bodies. To cite Chinese military strategist Sun Tzu, know yourself, but not your enemy. Find level of loss and victory. Know thy enemy, but not yourself. Wallow in defeat every time. Gaming, especially competitive gaming, is a battle. A battle that goes far beyond revenge bars and combo breakers. It's about knowing your opponent, both as a fighter, but also as a human. And that's the one part that always tends to get overlooked. For as invincible as we may feel at times, we do have limitations. Physical and psychological weaknesses built into our system that practice just can't undo. And those who understand how those work and how to exploit them will most likely win the match. And here you thought that bed and bath time costumes were only in there for fan service. Well, I bet the programmers also just thought they were in there for fan service too, but you know, hey, I've proven that there is a legitimate strategic advantage for those things being in there, so accidental good on you guys. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Want even more ways to psychologically overpower your opponents? Well then, subscribe! And speaking of sexy, not even the DOA gals compared to the sexiness that is getting a box of delicious snacks on your doorstep. That is the seductive power of Nature Box. And you can get your hands on that sexiness with a free trial by going to naturebox.com slash matpat, M-A-T-P-A-T. -A -T. Sign up and get a box full of gamer grub sent straight to your door every month. In fact, Join the ranks of some of these loyal theorists who've tried the service and are loving it. This month I'm munching on mini Belgian waffles, because look at them, they're little itty bitty waffles, how cute is that? As well as strawberry lemonade fruit stars, and the sweet and salty nut medley. I mean, who doesn't love salty nuts? And remember, your support of Nature Box is what helps out team theorists produce more videos for you. So get yourself a free trial of some succulent snacks and help out game theory in the process by going to naturebox.com slash Matpat. I will thank you, and so will your stomach. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a date with destiny.